All I've got is 2D up front. <laughs> I got 2D and I got mapping. We were basically fishing with a paper map and a redneck death liner. guys yeah it's late for us 10 o'clock right? late morning 10 oh, 10 oh yeah. we just got the Kissimmee that's Joshua in the back there that's my favorite son <laughs> um, he's the only son but you know <laughs> potato potato so we, we decided to do something different today we had completely different weather conditions it's the end of August uh, Hurricane Ida is over there in the Gulf getting ready to beat up on some of my buddies in Louisiana I hope, hope you guys will be safe but we came over to Kissimmee to try the midday bite we've got wind it's blowing about 15 out of the south right now we're supposed to be coming out of the east which is why I chose North Cove so this is gonna be a bit of a challenge uh, we do have some cloud cover so the weather is actually pretty decent you know it's comfortable out here at you know the last day of August but uh, we're gonna poke around in North Cove. On the last video I did on Kissimmee, I was talking about how to break down 35,000 acres. Well, we've broken this 30, today we've broken it down into the 10,000 acres that is North Cove and around Rabbit and Bird Island. And we're just gonna, we have no idea what's going on. I haven't been over here in a year. I don't normally fish Kissimmee in the spring and summer. It's more of a fall and winter bite for me. Um, but we're over here today and bringing you along to see if we can figure something out. Now, we do have a bit of a challenge though. One of the things that's going on on YouTube right now is in the fishing community as a whole, big guys, little guys, everybody's kind of complaining about the, the electronics revolution and, and how it's ruining fishing and it's not really fishing. And I have those electronics on my boat, almost all of the big toys. And I don't care, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Personally, I think if you're against innovation in the fishing industry, and unless you're fishing with a hook made out of bone and a line made out of horse hair tied to a stick, right? then you're using advanced technology. But again, anybody, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but that's just mine. I have them, except we had a pretty close lightning strike the other night to the dock, and I'm, I'm, we're blind. I, I, I worked on it yesterday. I thought it was just the ethernet switch, but we have 2D sonar right here, and I have GPS, barely, and that's it. So my $8,000 electronic yeah. setup has been reduced to a $250 portable fish finder that you can suction cup to the bottom of a John boat. So this is gonna be instinct and, and knowledge and a lot of guesswork, and probably throwing a little bit of everything. But we do have wind. Uh, water temps are 84, which they're down. We got some rain with that nasty lightning. Um, hopefully we can find some fish. We're over on a big flat on the east side of, uh, of North Cove right now. We're gonna drift through and see what we can find. The plan was to come fish some brush piles, but with this rollers out there in the middle of North Cove, fishing brush piles is gonna be a challenge. But we might still try it anyway, who knows? So stick around. So we're in about four feet of water now, and we've got these pads up here. Yeah, I like the mix vegetation. The, the mix is nice, and you're throwing the you're throwing the thumper, big one, yeah, which is a good plan. I think I'm gonna. What am I gonna throw? What am I going to throw? I want something. I need a moving bait. It's pretty clean out here, though. I'm gonna throw the yeah, square. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm gonna throw the square bill for a while. See. Yeah. I mean, I, we, I may get wound up in the crap. Oh man, that wasn't rough ride over here. Yeah, yeah everything. Everything's up. tangled up. I'll get you a casting angle in a minute, Josh. Let me get over here so we can drift. We got a white bird down there, so that must be bait. Now that square bill came back clean the first time. That's good news. Josh is throwing the uh, the vibe as a search bait, and I'm throwing just about everything else. I'm throwing a toad. I'm throwing a square bill. I've been pitching the uh, the pippinator around a little bit, just trying to figure out what's going on over here. We got some birds coming up ahead of us, so hopefully we'll find some bait. Maybe we find some active fish here, but we're gonna keep bouncing around. So stay tuned. It's been over a year since I've seen this piece of water. But there's a cormoran, and then we had you know three white birds here, so there are bait fish here in the vicinity. We just gotta find a bass. Cause they're looking for the same meal that the bass are looking for. And 
they're a pretty good indicator that there is at least bait fish in the area. I expected this flat to have hydrilla on it, but I haven't seen the first bit of hydrilla over there. I, you know, I was kind of coming over here to fish it kind of like Toho style. Because typically over here, you've got some matted out hydrilla and then a hard edge. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping to come over here and fish off the hard edge yep. in the hard sand bottom where they'd be, some of the bigger fish should have been roaming around. So we're gonna have to make some adjustments. And you know, any plan that can't be changed is a bad plan. Right. So at least we're gonna make a new plan here. We'll figure something out. Yeah. That's why we got such a late start is I let you sleep in. Well, and, we, and it's the excuse is, oh, we wanna, we gotta try that after 10 and Yeah, yeah, so, that, yeah, that, so that was the real reason. Gotta figure that out. We decided, yeah, it wasn't the fact that, <laughs> Josh got to the guest suite <laughs> about 2 a.m. and I got up about three and and I decided to let him sleep in. It's just worked out to where we're gonna try this 10 to two. Actually, we're gonna do a, like a four hour challenge because after two o'clock, it's gonna be lunchtime. Yep, agreed. So we are uh, we're 39 minutes into our four hour challenge and we've yet to have a bite. So we gotta pick up the pace. There's Cormoran feeding right there. We need to get over here see what he's feeding on he just so we just had a cormoran pop up between us and open water so that gives us an idea more of an idea where the bait is because he's in there feeding there's a little opening in the uh in the pattern hey, well. first fish coming to the boat so the cormoran was correct keep him up get him buddy get out of here buddy come on it's a little guy that's a nice fish, Josh. That's a pound and a half, two pounds. Did you break the tip off? I just did, yes. You just broke the tip off. Perfect. I had the line, too. Come on, come on, quit it. Oh, that's that's, that's that a pretty one. decent fish. That's a nice fish. I'll then, uh, introduce him. Fish number one to the boat, yep. Pretty good hook set. What you catch him on? The, um, the lumper? Watermelon red. Watermelon red. CPF lure stumper. The thumper. Thanks for playing, buddy. Out another one. So we got one fish in the boat. Uh, 49 minutes in. Well, I, yeah, 49 minutes in. I spent about 10 of those minutes just completely changing plans. And he picked up the CPF lure stumper watermelon red. It's just the go to the color. fish in an area I was getting ready to pull down anyway because of the cormorant we saw, who was obviously having lunch over here. And that's what a bait is. So. That's one, stick around. All right, so we blew down through here for about half mile. Inside, outside, Josh found one decent fish that was hungry. We're gonna go try something else. I'm staying in North Cove for now, and we're gonna move further north up into the North End and see what we can do up there. There are some brush piles that might be protected from this planet, and we might give that a whirl, so stick around. Spot number two. Spot number one didn't work out. Well, it did work out. We just kind of picked it blind because it was wind blowing a point. We got inside, Josh boated a nice little two pounder. Shorty fish, but stout. Very stout fish. Uh... And we've moved further up into North Cove. We're now fishing the western bank of North Cove. <clears throat> we're out of the rollers, but we're still in some wind. Six feet of water, six and a half. It's outside Kissimmee grass line, it's very sparse. It's got some brush piles that are sticks that have blown up in it. So it gives it something a little different. When I was fishing here a couple years ago, there was some hydrilla and some eelgrass and even shallower, but uh, we'll go in there and check that out later. We'll see what this outside line's doing. There should be some fish on this outside edge, but we'll find out, so stick around. Spot number three, we've moved back south. We're in between Overstreet and Rabbit Island. Working a shell bar. It's an old community hole. We used to have a bunch of sticks that got blown up in the late 2000s by some, one of the hurricanes. But we're gonna fish this spot for a few minutes and either the fish are gonna bite quick here, which they do if they're here, or we'll be off to number four. So stick around. You know how I like a jig. I know. And that's honestly, I'm a smart move too. I mean, that's a really good bait, especially this time of year. There's another boat, finally. Bass boat number three. Yeah. It's just amazing that it's, you know, it's 1207. And that's maybe the third bass boat we've seen. So not many people fishing today. I get, I see why too. I come on, fish. This is my least favorite way to fish. Cause it's typically hours of boredom. And then, you know, followed by seconds of just chaos. Then hours of boredom again. But this is a good way to catch a really big fish this time of year. 
if you're willing to do the work. And I don't know that I'm willing to do the work for that long. All right, let's move. This ain't doing it. Okay. What are you throwing? Some jig. Okay. Good choice. Yeah, I just like the, it's so versatile because it's heavy enough to sink all the way to the bottom with some kind of speed, but I can also get it like get back, back and check that grass line, yeah. like a foot or so, or so back. Yeah, and I think that's where you need to be. We really don't need to be in that grass line any more than a couple feet because they're going to be sitting on this outside edge. If they're here, we're back in the bait again. I was concerned because the bait disappeared, but there's still bait out here. I think you're you're right about that swim jig. It's, it's a very versatile bait in Florida, and I don't see many people throw it. I think that one is actually a, is one of Mike's, the, the Seabrook Outdoors jigs. Spot number 25. <laughs> Spot number six, seven, eight, I don't know, been a bunch. We spent the last half hour offshore, kind of looking for some brush piles that used to have FWC markers on them, but goobers around here, they'll cut the markers off like they're trying to hide them from people. I don't know how they wind up gone, but they always wind up gone. But when FWC announces that they're putting them in, I just go out and mark them, but without any real electronics, we couldn't find them. And the wind keeps switching around on us, so that's a little bit of a, of a pain. But we do have some fog cover again, which is nice, because it got hot there for a minute. But it's, uh, it's 12.50. We got an hour and 10 minutes left in our chat. Challenge. We're still, we're actually in the mouth, I, you would call it, of North Cove, right outside of Overstreet Landing. Fishing another community hole that has got some brush in it, I think. Used to have brush in it, but we're going to poke around here for a bit, see what we can come up with. We've been throwing a bunch of different kind of reaction baits and flipping, I guess, the solid bite. Well, Josh got a fish, but he got another good bite. Flipping a jig. So we're going to keep doing some more of that. This wind blowing down this boat trail. There's got to be some current, which means there ought to be some fish on the edge of these pads. I got nothing. You got any ideas? Like, you've been fishing this lake your whole life and you got no ideas? I, w I was getting to it. Okay, we'll get to it already. Interrupt me. You know, you're a bit of a disappointment, Josh. I taught you to fish this lake, so I would have to remember how to do it for the rest of my life. And you're just not. So, well, who's got a fish in the boat, sir? Wow, that's a fair point. I can't believe you would come at me like that. Uh -huh. <sighs> yeah, I haven't had lunch. I'm getting a little hangry, so. <laughs> you think? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna use that as an excuse. <laughs> this, this is just not fair. What kind of depth are we at back here? We are in about five, four and a half feet of water still. I mean, this is a nice flat. Yeah, what's the deal? It's perfect. What's it's the deal? If they're not biting. That's the deal. This is the non-biting deal. Still scaring bait too. I mean, there's tons of bait in here. I don't I'm know confused. why. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. Are they buried back in these pads? Uh, I, I got nothing for you. They got, it's a water temperature. We don't, we don't have an accurate reading, do we? Yeah, we do. We're 86 degrees. I got accurate up here. I got 2D up here. It says 314 back yeah, here. Yeah, that one's a little off. We're struggling to get bit, but we're trying a little bit of everything. We've done a lot of riding around and looking because vegetation changes every year here seasonally and even without spraying it changes so just trying to get an idea so we do find a pattern we know where we can repeat it i mean that's that's the benefit of knowing your lake is that if you've got a good idea of, of what everything looks like and water depths and vegetation and structure that's the benefit of just some days just taking a day and riding a shoreline and taking a look at what you got because once you do figure out a pattern and you fish that spot, that pattern out in that spot, then you know where to go. You got six. Try again. You, yeah, yeah you, go, you can take that pattern and, and transfer it to other spots on your lake. Right now we have the no bite pattern going, so we can transfer this, this pattern pretty much anywhere. It'll work anywhere. And we do have some rain coming, so we might cut this challenge a few minutes short, but I'd like to go the, to the total four hours, see what we can do. We're, we're scrambling here. We're throwing everything in the boat at them in what is just beautiful water. I mean, the water's clean. It's not clear, but you never really get clear water on Kissimmee because we've got the stain. But as far as we're blowing down a big boat trail here, you see we got pads and, and Kissimmee grass and pepper grass and some hydrilla patches and the dollar pads and just, it's just a beautiful mix, but we don't have any fish yet to show for it. So we got 26 minutes. You better get busy catching fish, boy. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> One thing I've tried to put in every video is instruction without it being a takeaway. But yeah, I take away like even two or three little tidbits, some nuggets of the little bitty pieces. If you put them all together, you really get a lesson in bass fishing. I am by no means the greatest bass fisherman I've ever lived. I'm not even close, but I'm a student of bass behavior. And what I try to do is put a little bit of information, lecture, lesson, whatever you want to call it in every video without it being a lecture video. Right. That tidbit about 
about really knowing your lake is a big deal. I like everybody has their favorite spots to fish in their lake. And the reason that they're their favorite spots to fish is they've caught fish there. But unless you truly understand why you caught fish there and can identify the structure, the cover, the bottom contours, the bait types that are there, it doesn't really do you much good other than you've got a really good spot you like to fish. But if you can break it down and figure out, okay, well, I got bit here because of X, Y, and Z, and you spent the time on your home lake to study the lake itself. I'm talking about paper map study or electronic map study where you see like I was fishing in four feet of water and I had this kind of bottom and I had this vegetation. If you know your lake well enough, whether it's 10,000 acres, 1,000 acres or 35,000 acres, if you spent the time on the lake every year, because everything changes, the vegetation at least on Kissimmee changes every year. If you have spent the time and you get a spot, you get on a spot where you get bit and you're catching good fish. If you've done your work, if you've done your homework on days like today, where they just aren't biting and we did all that riding around and looking. You do your homework on the days where they're not biting great, on the days when they are biting better or you're in a tournament and you stumble across some fish, then you have in the back of your mind five or 10 or 15 other spots that are at least similar. That's how you put a pattern together. But you have to have done the work and know what your lake looks like. And that's that's why we spend so much time riding and looking. But that's at least we got that accomplished today. Yeah. So next trip, I mean, next trip is likely to be better. Because well, we haven't lake, seen this water in over a year. This lake looked, this, for this looks nothing like no. it did a year ago because we couldn't get in here. Right, it was so choked up. But this is beautiful and there are fish in here. We just haven't stumbled across the right spot yet, but they're here. Somewhere in here, there is oh, a water fish. Across. We just haven't found them because we found everything else. We found a bait. We've got the right water depth. The temperature's fine. We've got great conditions at the moment and the vegetation is right. But we just haven't stumbled across that pot of fish yet. And once we find them, we could hone in on them. Mm -hmm. And they're not gonna move that much from a day to day or a week to week basis. But over a year, they'll move, you know, half mile for some reason, you know, because as the water levels come up and down in Kissimmee, it's moving these fish, you know, in the winter, like we're starting to go into the, they're raising the level of the lake. We're at our zone B elevation right now, but we have another foot and a half to go before we get the max pool. But that's November one. This is gonna be a foot and a half deeper, which means the fish, if we had found them here today and everything else is equal, then we would have found them at November one up in there where those white birds are, which they may be up there now and we may be in the wrong cut, but particularly on Kissimmee, you have to watch your, your lake levels because there is four feet difference between the normal low elevation, which is June one, and the max elevation, which is November one. And if you can identify where your fish are from a depth perspective and stay in that area, you can stay on them. Like I'm going to be fishing Kissimmee mostly for the next three months. And that's just the way the trips are booked. Fall fishing in Kissimmee is my favorite time. As soon as we get those cool mornings, you can break out the toad and we could have a blast in here fishing top water. And I'm looking forward to that. I mean, that happens really in probably three weeks. We start getting the cooler mornings. It's not 90 degrees when you walk out the door and you don't get slapped with that 100% humidity and you get sweaty on your walk to the truck. But we're going to spend some time over here. This this looks too good for there not to be fish in here. They're here. I'm certain. It's just we haven't spent enough time over here to find them. But I didn't know it looked like this. The last time I was over here, it, it's horrible. You couldn't get in here. But this year, particularly since this is going to be protected from a northeast blow, uh, probably I wind up spending a lot of time over here. 14 minutes, kick talk. Let's go. It's fourth quarter and the home team is losing badly. I mean, just look at the, all the, the predatory birds. Yep. They're just camped out here everywhere. There's plenty of bait in here. There's bass in here. We're coming back. This is getting to be personal now. And I made a comment in the last video about pros not wanting to come to Florida because they look bad on TV. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact of the matter is you look bad on YouTube. <laughs> I look bad on YouTube. <laughs> Cause it looks like we can't fish. And that may be the case, but that has not been the case in the past. But. You just got to title the video casting practice on TV. Oh my God, this is just horrible. <laughs> These last two weeks have just been a struggle just to get anything to bite unless you're throwing live bait. Now, there are a lot of people catching some really big fish up on Toho, but they're catching them on live bait and shiners. And even some of the shiner trips, you know, they're coming back with shiners because they couldn't get fish to eat them all. I mean, it's tough, but I refuse to hide the fact that it's tough to fish. I could disappear into the YouTube world and not post a video in a month and, and throw a few pictures up of the random big fish I caught, but the entire goal of this channel is to teach the reality of Lake Kissimmee fishing. I picked the hardest time of the year to start a YouTube channel. Maybe I'm not as smart as I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was easy, everybody'd be doing it.
Yeah, well, apparently <laughs> there's nobody out here but us and the one guy up there fishing for bluegill. So I can see all the way across the lake to the west side. I can see, we can see 20,000 acres of the 35,000 acres from this vantage point, and there's us, and there's one guy fishing for bluegill over there. <laughs> yeah, and they haven't moved in, in an hour. They haven't moved. Yeah, that just makes you wonder just how smart we really are. The explanation is it is hard to catch fish in Central Florida on artificial bait in August, and that's the fact, Jack. Seven minutes, tick tock. I throw myself out of the boat. That would at least be exciting on camera. Our four hours are up. Uh, it was kind of a bust for catching, but what we did to to make this time valuable is we we started doing a little bit of research because we're gonna fish Kissimmee for the next three months pretty much exclusively. As the water levels come up, this lake just gets better and better. In the fall, when the the water temps just drop a little bit and the morning air temps go down, the frog bite gets really cool over here. So we're gonna be fishing a lot of top water in the next three months. But today we just decided it was more of a scouting trip. We put the four hour time limit on just to have a little fun between father and son. And he beat me, me you know, it's a hockey score today, you know, one to nothing. You know, we had a good time. We learned a lot about the lake. We haven't been on a lake in a year, and the vegetation looks completely different. It looks beautiful, like, as you just saw, but the fish aren't biting at the moment. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Let's go get some beetles.